terms of something that I wish I knew and I think that could be helpful for everyone. It, I noticed that a lot when it comes to that next barrier, once you have your idea and once you have your story, it, it always tends to be the script from what I've seen. Uh, I think a lot of people, including myself when I started out, spend too much time writing a script, uh, uh, too much time perfecting a script, uh, too much time um, writing draft after draft. I think what's important uh, to know when writing a script is that uh, as long as you've got a good story, you've got your characters, you've got your dialogue, um, don't spend too much of your time um, writing draft after draft and trying to polish every single line and every little word. Um, very much uh, what I've learned is that the script is the first step. It's the raw material. It is the working uh, document that's going to help you um, move on to the next step and continue to actually make something. Uh, I know a lot of people, they end up writing a script for, for years and, and I say, hey, hey, buddy, hey, how's it going? Has, have you made that film yet? Or have you, have you, where's that short film? I want to see it. And usually the reply will be, I'm still working on a script and I'm just finishing up another draft. So I would say the number one barrier to kind of avoid is write a good draft uh, and then move on. Logistically, I would say the next step after that, from my perspective is think about your shot list. I think that's the one thing that I would leave until the last minute. Whenever I'd make a film, I'd do it like the night before we were shooting. Um, and it ended up being such an important thing to have planned out. Uh, a shot list is just taking the script that you have, taking that draft, that good draft, uh, and then really trying to visualize how you would actually shoot the scenes that you wrote. Think about, uh, even if you can't draw, you can make a list of what kind of shots you would want to see that could help visualize your script, whether it's a wide shot, a medium shot, a close up. How do you want people to actually visualize and experience your script? And I think that would be a better investment of your time uh, instead of getting stuck on the script. Usually I, it would be something that I would be planning the night before. Most of my shot lists are just written, written on the script itself or um, just written on a, on a piece of paper. That's how, how late I left it in the mm. process. Like usually we'd spend so much time on our computers writing our scripts, but something as, as valuable as a shot list, which I think will really help people visualize the story that you're trying to tell, that's something that you can spend more time on instead yeah. of just writing. Even if you're not planning to shoot something until later on, mm -hmm. I think a shot list is just gonna help you if you guys are just starting out making a film, think of it, a film as a visual medium. Um, myself, I started off actually as a writer, so I always got so hung up on the words and the dialogue and like perfecting every single word that's on a script. Once I started making films, I realized that, wow, this is such a visual medium. Most of the storytelling is done visually. So if you're, if you're planning a film right now, what I would do is have your script and then start thinking how you would visualize this, this film. And I think it will be a good use of your time. Film that we made for the 48 hour film challenge this year uh, it was last right year. in the middle last year it was right in the middle of October so it was kind of during uh, cases are rising at least where we were so we weren't necessarily comfortable being in person for that what we did was we, was we used zoom um, which was really really interesting to use from a filmmaking perspective it, it wasn't like we took a script that was written for a traditional short film and then said, oh, let's translate this into Zoom. It was one where we knew that we were making this, we were gonna make this using Zoom. And so we made sure that the story took place in Zoom and kind of used that to its advantage. Um, I think that's a really great way to make something now. You, know, you can connect with actors, whether it's through tap or through your connections and, and use them to, to already get started in terms of making something. And I think that's probably gonna be the biggest change from everything that we've talked about in terms of planning shots and uh, shooting things is that you might have to be a little bit more flexible in terms of allowing your actors or your collaborators to 
shoot things on their own and, and trust them. So the, the other members of our team, we didn't know what they were shooting. We didn't know what they were going to be doing. We had no idea. We didn't have any control of that. We weren't there listening on a phone. We kind of like allowed them to have the flexibility to shoot what, what was right for the story and what was planned. Uh, and then we reviewed it later. So I think um, probably if you're going to make something now and you're collaborating with people who are remote from you, you might have to, maybe if you give them a good shot list, it'll be close to what your vision is, but you might have to be a lot more flexible in terms of what kind of footage they're going to be shooting. And I think maybe now during the pandemic, planning is even more important because if you do want them to be, uh, them to get footage that's close to what your vision is, you're really going to have to have it very well planned out and very, very clear in terms of what you want them to shoot. I think I, I want to say I'm also like many of the filmmakers on this panel. I also like to edit my own films. And, and I, think, I think it's an important thing to note as a filmmaker, as a, as a short filmmaker, you know, you're not just a script writer and you're not just a director. Being an editor, at least being heavily involved and have a lot of knowledge about the editing process is a major part of being a filmmaker. Uh, I would even say that it's one of the most important parts that contributes to what people end up seeing. So I would say, if you think of yourself as an editor, even if you aren't the one who's physically editing the film, think of yourself as an editor, take pride in that, learn about editing, learn best practices, uh, approach making a film as approach editing a film as being the main goal when you're filmmaking because what you realize the more involved you are in in editing is that wow like so much of the decision making and so much of what ends up being the final film happens in the editing room and happens in the decisions that you make when editing so what i would do to enjoy it is tell yourself from the beginning that I'm going to dedicate a month, six months, whatever it takes to editing this. I'm not going to either give it to somebody else who you don't know, who's going to magically come back with a finished film for you or try and do it um, too fast uh, unless it's a, a film challenge weekend. I think the more you enjoy and love editing and all the stuff that y Yvonne and Brennan and everyone talked about in terms of experimenting with different cuts of experimenting with different types of footage um, experimenting with how to use sound, all of that happens during the editing side of things. So the more that you go into making a short film thinking, I'm not just a writer, I'm not just a director, I'm not just a cinematographer, but man, I'm an editor. That is how you're gonna enjoy it much more. One thing I wanna share is that everybody on this panel, we haven't just made one film or two films. Everyone here has made many, many films and I think approaching making a short film, it's almost like you're building your film resume. Similarly, you would never go to a, a, a high paying job without anything on your resume and saying, hey, hire me to be CEO yeah. of IBM or whatever. You would have a resume of things that you've done. So if you're just starting out filmmaking, you shouldn't be worried about getting funding. You shouldn't be worried about having the best camera, et cetera. You should be worried about finishing a film and then making your next film, finishing that, make your next one, learn from that, by the end of a year, a couple of years, you'll have a handful of films that form your resume. And nobody's going to give money to you if you have done, never done anything before. Like Lana said, the more often you actually have examples of films that are in similar genres or similar styles of what you do want to make with a big budget, the better that your chance that you're going to have that someone will eventually give you money to make that everybody on this panel has made a film for zero money that even though it wasn't the greatest film that would have, that would look great on Netflix, it was still the genre that we wanted to make. It was still the style. It was still kind of us finding our voices as filmmakers. So the way that I would approach it is forget about all those questions about budget and funding and just make as many films as you can yeah. and build that resume, your film resume. <laughs> Another, uh, another strategy is always film like safety shots, where even if, whether you're inside or outside, doesn't matter. Even if you think that you got the shot that you needed and the focus was great, always do another one just in case. Never only have one version of a, of a shot, not only for the focus, but mainly for the audio. 
there's been so many cases when I've been editing something that I shot where the acting and the, the, the focus of the shot that I wanted isn't always usable because there's something, there was an airplane or there was some loud sound that kind of ruined what we got in terms of audio from a certain shot. So always make sure you're taking safety shots, especially if it's a scene with lots of dialogue and you could potentially have an airplane or a lawnmower or something that's in the background. Sometimes when you're filming, you don't, you kind of block out the rest of the world and focus only on the shot, but you really have to be attentive to the other sounds that are happening uh, in the environment that you're shooting in. If you notice that there's a car that sound that happened or there again, especially where we live, there's lots of airplanes always flying overhead. Make sure that you get another shot just to be safe. You can always use that if there's something that you really like, but it's just not usable because of the audio. For my first ever short film, before I knew much about the process of filmmaking, I was like, I was like you, Lazo. I wanted to use an Ace of Bass song in a Tap Fest film. And I didn't know much about the process. So I was like, okay, I actually found out the information of like the, the um, people in charge of the rights to the song. And I actually emailed them. Mm. I was like, hey guys, I'm, I'm just going to be screening at Tap Fest for one day. Can I use it? And even to get it screened once at Tap Fest, there was so much legalities and so many questions that they wanted answered. They will reply to you, but the answers you're not going to like. They're not going to, they're not going to give you the freedom to use it how you want to. So I think um, I would stay away from. It. Yeah, yeah. I know everybody wants to use a famous song in a in a great scene in your film, but it's not worth the trouble of of um, doing it. I also want to note, uh, like Adnan said, um, I didn't go to school for filmmaking. I didn't spend years and years uh, in a film school. I actually discovered filmmaking through TAP. I've been a member of TAP since 2016, so five years now. And I've been making short films uh, since then. So it hasn't been that long for me either. Like Adnan, I'm continuing to learn uh, by doing. And I think uh, a lot of you guys that are probably watching this as well, you didn't go to film school. You kind of have this uh, curiosity about making something. And I hope that um, this is gonna be good for you. Mm -hmm.